Welcome, everyone, to the first episode of the Firestorm podcast. Uh, hell of a name, am I right, Trent? Uh, you are 100% right, because we decided not to go to the way of the devil, and we decided to embrace the Firestorm, and we are here now with the first episode of the Firestorm See, podcast. Exact. I mean, that's kind of a, a pun in itself. Uh, hell of a name, get it? Because, like, well, I do get fine. it. Yeah, Firestorm? there we go. That, that's, a, that's a joke right there. Is hell wow, more for firestorms? I hope not. But either way, we're well, here now. Doesn't matter. <laughs> ignore, ignore all Who the knows? Cost, or, ignore the satanic tendencies. We are here with the Firestorm podcast. But you know what you can't ignore is our tendency to be very, very loud. Well, you can't ignore that if you're going to be listening to the podcast all the way through, which we hope nope. you do. It's very really difficult Stick to around. Ign- it will be very difficult to ignore the fact that we are very loud boys. In fact, this was, if you heard episode zero, we were nearly called the Loud Boys podcast. So, <laughs> But yeah. some idiots took it before us. Oh, and yes. I got a problem with that. Yeah, and we decided Firestorm Podcast could use a bit of a revamp from its previous generation. Because apparently it used to be some sort of... It, 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 last episode was in 2016, 2017... It was something about, I don't know, religion. So we decided to take it over. We are now the new Firestorm podcast. The second generation Firestorm podcast. But you know what? It's it's basically an entirely different podcast because, you know, we'll be talking about nerdy shit and swearing a lot. So that's pretty much the opposite of a religious podcast. So there we go. Yes. And and introducing ourselves, my name is Trent, known on YouTube as Trent Y, and I am accompanied by my American friend here, Gus. Uh, I am Gus, I am known online as Silverstorm, and we are here to chat it up, have some fun, and just hopefully make y'all laugh and keep y'all entertained for like an hour or so. Yes, and I've seen online there is a lot of stigma around two mates that start a podcast because they think they're funny and don't continue (laughs) it after five episodes. (laughs) Now... (laughs) Even Uh-oh. though that's essentially what we've done, I think we can go further than that. I think oh, we're we can way do better, better than, than all we're that way before. better than that. We, we, we can laugh it up. We can hopefully be entertaining if, if any of we our can previous hopefully co- have intelligent conversation as well. We can we can be loud Maybe. as fuck and be smart as fuck at the same time. It's yeah. possible. Men it can is. multitask, all right? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe if only if only a little bit. Men can multitask. Well, I reckon this this podcast will be a prime example of us multitasking if possible. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So Let's jump into it, although embracing a dead meme. Let's jump, <laughs> Let's just into, jump it. into it. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, this may be a lot of meme reference referencing. Oh, this as well. we, we we meme a lot. We do. Just, it's we just do. It, just get ready for it. Just I don't be know prepared. I, I don't know if I'm sad about that or happy about that. Oh, it's a good thing. It, yeah, yeah. Fuck it's it. A it's a good thing, thing. I think. Yeah, it's, it's fuck a, it. It's a good thing. Why not? All right. So. Um, we were brainstorming on ideas for the podcast, and believe it or not, we do have more than just five ideas, so hopefully oh. this will go past five episodes. I know, right? Holy we shit. A, we have um, a whole <laughs> fucking list ready yeah, to go. Yeah, so I came up with this idea for our first episode as kind of the intro to us, sort of, since you'll... I mean, you had episode zero, but that was basically just laugh, us laughing our asses off for about 55 minutes. So... Look, so, look, look, I'm still <laughs> upset about the fact we didn't call ourselves 69 times loud, but <laughs> if you want to see more hilarious jokes like that, go follow us on our Twitter and Facebook, because we're oh, going to we be are. doing mm-hmm. a lot of dumb shit, especially referen- referencing Dumb shit other videos. is my middle name. We're going to be <laughs> referencing other videos and um, podcasts we've done. Uh, so, mm-hmm. yeah, be sure to check us out on there for yeah. all the latest and greatest of dead memes and funny jokes. Funny jokes. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, so, yeah, I came up with this episode as an intro to us. Uh, I wanted for each of us to talk about, and this is something that I don't think we've even told ourselves in person, like, told each other, um, like, without being recorded, but mm. I wanted to talk about um, each of our 
stories, how we got started on YouTube, like what inspired us to start making videos, and kind of, kind of starting all the way up until present day, and then kind of talk a little bit about our future projects, not only individually, but for this podcast as well. Yes. Now, let's start with the introductions. Now, who wants to go first between you and um, me? I was going to... I have, Mine's pretty long. I have a long history on YouTube, so I was going to let you go first. <laughs> sure, no problem. <laughs> well, I don't... See, I have had a, I've had a good think about this, but mine's a... It is a fairly straightforward story. I um, mm-hmm. started off back... Well, you could say just after YouTube peaked. When would you... What year would you say YouTube really peaked? Um... I don't know. Maybe like early 2010s. I don't yeah. really know because I've had yeah because I've I've been on YouTube for a long time. Like it not like not necessarily making videos but like watching stuff. Yeah, uh, I've been watching. See, I've been watching again uh, around the time when I got to high school. So for me, year mm. eight is when I yeah. finally discovered. Oh yeah, the internet exists because <laughs> like my parents were kind of like. They didn't really let me delve into technology until I got a little bit older. Like, throughout primary mm-hmm. school, like, not, then again, throughout primary school, none of us really had anything like iPods or anything. I won yeah. an iPod in year seven, but and I had a $20 allowance each month to buy music, and that was about it. I didn't have any mm-hmm. access to internet apart from the home computer, which no one has anymore. No one has a home computer just sitting in the house anymore. It's yeah. old news. Anyway, so yeah, around year eight is when I got into... So how I would have, would I have been then? Around 13, 14, something mm-hmm. like that? I would have started getting into YouTube because I found out the internet exists. I started watching... Woo-hoo! I started, I started <laughs> watching, you know, the typical big gaming YouTubers around that time. Like, mm-hmm. for me, it was uh, Yami Mash, Markiplier, and PewDiePie. Obviously, as with everyone else. Um, yeah watch the horror shit no problem it's everyone else a lot of kids around that time as they got popular started watching them as well um yeah. for me it was around year nine so it would have been again around 14 15 around there um i decided mm-hmm. to make a youtube channel i um called it under my own name i didn't know what brands were i didn't know didn't have a creative youtube name at the time i just called it my name and i don't remember a lot of what I uploaded at that time, but there was two videos or two kind of like extending videos that related to each other that I do remember uploading, mm-hmm. which were perhaps the funniest things I ever remember doing. But <laughs> because I deleted the channel, I can't recover them and I don't have them. Mm-hmm. Um, the first one was a few mates and I, when I got my... Uh, first personal console an Xbox 360 um, we noticed all the f- big YouTubers online uh, playing uh, like Slender and stuff like that like the, the typical horror yeah. games of that of that generation and um, Sl- Slender the Arrival had just come out on Xbox 360 mm-hmm. so we decided to play it and record ourselves playing like, like buy it and record ourselves playing it so the thing is, though, I didn't... On the 360, you couldn't record the screen. So we literally... My friend bought an iPad tripod and we set oh. up the iPad to record my family's big TV oh. in the lounge Dude, that's room. how you do it. That's how you do it in, like, that, that when is, you're young like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how we did it. And um, so th- there was about four of us. And I was influenced by... Um, I forgot what they called. I forgot what they actually called this channel. They don't upload much anymore, but they have a really funny series called Eleven Drunk Guys Play. Huh. That's what the... That's... Uh, Eleven Drunk Guys Play Slender. That was our influence for that's making great. this because we thought it was I fucking it. great. Um, so it, I, I called it Four Idiots Play Slender the Arrival. That's what I titled mm-hmm. it. And literally, we, there was about four episodes of us playing through Slender the Arrival. And it was some of the funniest shit because we all took in turns playing. And then I remember at the end, episode one ended with us dying um, from, uh-huh. from the Slender Man. And then everyone yelling at me to go put the pizza in the oven. And I don't <laughs> know why, but to me, it was the funniest shit 
And That's it, pretty good. It, 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 it was great. And, yeah, I kind of regret, like... I deleted the channel before I made Trout and the Dash Y because uh, around this time is when I properly got into writing and I wanted to publish my book. But then yeah. I kind of had that internal thought because uh, I always kind of stress about things that don't and, and overthink things sometimes. I thought yeah. that if I published a book under Trent Millay and then people found that YouTube account with my name as the, as the name of the channel and found that dumb shit... I recorded on that channel that <laughs> my credibility would go under because I would look like such a dumb fuck. But now right. I don't care. I've kind of referenced both back and forth with, with when I published the Protective William one. I referenced, yo, if you want to see the song about it or any updates about it, go subscribe to Train the Dash Y. So nowadays I don't give a shit and I don't care yeah, anymore. Yeah, that's but how back, it should be. But back then I was worried about it. Now... Mm. Now, I said there was a second video I, re- I remember recording and wanting to keep, but I <laughs> I don't remember yeah. it at this point of time. What the fuck you was that You don't remember video? exactly what it is. D- I told you exactly what it was? No, no, no. You don't remember. No, like, it's... Th- it, yeah, it's annoying. There, okay, there was... I, I uploaded a little bit of stuff on that channel, and apart from For Idiots Play Slender, there was one other video I really liked, but I've already... Mm-hmm. For- but I've forgotten what it was. So... <laughs> If I, if I remember it, I'll come back to it. But yeah, it was mainly for Idiots yeah. Place Slender. That was the funniest shit to me, and mm-hmm. I regret deleting the channel. But around that time as well, my other mates started, like, they thought, oh, maybe we could do the same thing. Uh, one of my mates made a channel called Midget on a Bicycle because he was the smallest Beautiful. out of all of us, and it was really funny. You can still find it today. There's still videos of it there. Hey. And he gained a fuckload of subscribers from one video because he uploaded a video of his blind dog kicking his ass at soccer. And it was really fu- <laughs> It was really cool. And a bunch of like websites were just like, oh, this dog's amazing and he's blind. And um, huh. so he gained a bunch of subscribers. And he's just like, dude, we can make some... F- <gasps> I just remember the other video. Haha. <laughs> I knew it would come back to me. Um, hey. uh, it, it references the story. Yeah. He, um, he said, well, why don't we all, um, why don't we all, like me and my, do- me and my two mates combine on his channel and just upload shit whenever we want. And I yeah. said, all right, cool. So I deleted the Trent Malay channel and then we all joined together. It was me, my small mate and my mate. That's a wog. And we called the ch- and we called the channel Fat Wog on a Bicycle because Beautiful. of the midget on the bicycle thing, and it was bad. But we <laughs> all uploaded fantastic stuff. And the other video I remember and wish I never deleted was us going around a shopping center, asking cafes and like food stalls and like like fast food restaurants like McDonald's and all that for mm. food that wasn't on their items or things that never made sense. Beautiful. So, I've always wanted to do something like something stupid like that. Yeah, and we all took in turns asking dumb shit. Like, I remember we didn't end up using it in the video, but my mate went to a cafe and asked for a Big Mac, even though McDonald's was right next door. <laughs> and it was really funny. And my, uh, you know, Wendy's, obviously, you, yes. you guys yes. know Wendy's. Here, it's a little less popular. Here, it's just called Wendy's hot dog chain or something like that. It's a bit less mm-hmm. popular. Instead of the redhead chick, this is literally just like a love heart as the logo. Either way, yeah. they, uh, they, they mainly do hot dogs and shakes and that. And instead of mm. going and asking for a hot dog, my mate asked for a warm cat. <laughs> And the look, the look of, of the look of shock and confusion on the lady's face that was taking his order was so funny because he even like he said a warm cat and she's just like I- excuse me and he pointed at the sign and said a warm cat and he, and she's just like. <laughs> so confused and then he says never mind and walks off and but i'm in the line behind him just holding my phone and then she looks and then where before i step forward so she can take my order she looks back at the menu like what the fuck is she talking about like he, he she's looking for warm cat on the menu 
And oh my Incredible. god, it is some of the f that you that the, was... the fact that you actually managed to convince one of the workers that warm cat might actually be a menu <laughs> item. <laughs> See, back then, f for us, we were around fourteen, fifteen. That was the funniest shit in the world to us. And mm. yeah, since then, uh, half the videos we del I deleted them when I made Tran the Dash Y because I thought they're fucking stupid. And uh, I renamed his channel Midget on a Bicycle. So there's still some videos like his dog killing him at soccer. They're still up yeah. there. So if you search Midget on a Bicycle, you'll find it. But um, yeah, and then so around 2015, actually, it says on my channel here, August 22nd, I believe. Uh, August 22nd, 2015. I started mm -hmm. Tran Y. Um, only I know why it's Trent under dash Y. I know what the Y stands for. And, mm -hmm. uh, there is a video very early on with my friend who's got over a thousand subs on YouTube. Uh, we did a thing called like a small YouTuber tag. Mm -hmm. And, uh, she asked what, uh, the Y stood for. And I said then that I forgot, but that's a lie. I know what it is. I remember, but I refuse to tell anyone because it's my got secret. It. So, mm -hmm. yeah, the the Y in Trent the Y, it doesn't stand for YouTube, it stands for something else personal to me. So, yes, uh, that's mm. why I called it that. And um, I ve I'm very much aware that it's a underscore and not under dash. <laughs> so, yeah, don't give me shit about that. That's just what I've done. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 back, then I didn't, back then I didn't know, but since then I've learned that it's an mm. underscore and I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> sticking with it. Anyway, so... I've gone this far. A, yeah. So that's yeah. how I kind of got influenced to start mm. YouTube. And that's how I became interested in it, just by watching yep. YouTubers, obviously. And I'm kind of the only one out of all my mates that have stuck with it, because none of them mm. really got interested in it, to be honest, after that. Like, yeah. after... Once we got further into high school, we just became, like, disin disinterested. Like, there wasn't really a point. And, um... Right. And, like, just for me, though, like... I found this as an opportunity because for some reason I always have this stigma about like recording memories in a way other than like remembering them. I like taking photos of things, I like video recording yep. things, and we had recorded so much just dumb shit on a whim uh, mm -hmm. in school that and outside of school. Like we just I just thought this shit needs to go somewhere. So I started this channel. And yep. Since then, even though I've only got 164 subscribers at the time of recording, which isn't really a lot, and I'm nearly doing this for five years, I still love it. I still love mm -hmm. recording random shit and putting it up there, and I've started a few series which people are actually interested in now, which yeah. is awesome. Like, Trent Plays is just me where I find games that I love and play them for like a 20 minute video to give my impression on it amazing mm -hmm. online artists this is how i met you amazing online yep. artists um every oh, like about 95 percent of my amazing online artist videos those artists have found that video and have yeah. personally thanked me and have said like they've appreciated feedback and everything and yeah it, it's just great to connect with them and let people yeah. know that their work's appreciated so that's why i made that series oh and yeah really and like as a musician it's like when you see someone that's like actually like heard what you've got to offer and like is offering you feedback on your stuff it's like you don't actually get proper feedback as a musician a lot of the times especially on youtube because a lot of people just like to be like, well, you suck on uh, on YouTube comments. And so when you get proper like feedback, like, Here, here's what I like that you do. Here's what I think you could do better. As an online musician, it's like, whoa, that's pretty cool. And then you're See, like, <laughs> so it's, it's other, just cool. The other thing with YouTube is that like, uh, it it's so often ingrained that people don't know how to give proper constru constructive criticism. Like, yeah. Most of the time I've noticed with cover artists such such as yourself, and a lot mm -hmm. of the people I've talked about are cover artists, they, in their comment section, most of the time it's either the original was better, or this is awesome, which is great, or yeah. hey, can you cover this? Yeah, that's literally it. <laughs> I know. A lot of the time there isn't really constructive feedback on certain songs now i know with amazing online artists i just reflect on artists that i enjoy songs that i think are my favorites and talk about things that i enjoyed and things that i thought could have been better i don't really have a lot of yeah. time to delve into 
songs per se in general like around that time when i made that video about you my main feedback was that your voice doesn't always match the pitch of your music like because obviously we are young as well so obviously Mm -hmm. it hasn't fully developed to the point where you can find the right tone and pitch with each song yeah you've massively improved since then i will admit (laughs) you are like how how long ago did I make that? Like a year ago? I don't know. You've you've improved so much over the last yeah, year with your, uh, with your music year and, a half and your ago? vocals. Yeah, yeah. With your vocals and your music, you've improved so much over the last oh, year. Oh yeah, half. dude. Like just between from like late 2018 to now, especially I've seen like I've just noticed that like it's it's and it's a lot to do with like properly warming up and all that stuff. Because a lot of times, especially when I. Um, first started out, it was like I would just kind of go in, I would just have a song done, it's like, okay, it needs vocals, and then I would just start recording them, instead of, like, taking the time to warm up and do all of that stuff, so there's a lot of, there's a lot that goes into it, and I was very hasty with that kind of thing, which is why a lot of my earlier stuff with vocals kind of reflected that hastiness and rushed mm. feeling yeah, def- yeah, definitely but, um, yeah, so anyway, since then, um, that's Essentially, my background uh, getting into YouTube, and yeah. I've uh, there's been a couple times where I've thought, well, is there really a point in doing this? I mean, I put a lot of time into editing these videos, and then I put a lot of time into uploading them. Waste like we we never used to have unlimited internet. We used to be limited yeah. on the internet, and I used to use it up a lot. And everyone would get pissed off at me, and I yeah. understandably, I understand why. But um, yeah, now now it's gotten to the point where. I'm at a stage where, yeah, I still want to upload stupid, silly videos, but I also want to create more professional videos. I really want to be a bit more professional with with, uh, my content, as in... I want to make it look awesome, sound awesome, and that's why I'm, I've bought better equipment, and that's why yeah. I've bought better editing software. Like for the first few years of my of me on YouTube, I recorded everything on an iPad and edited it all in iMovie. However, yeah. half the time it never looked like that because I knew little tips and tricks, and I knew certain things about how to make it look a lot better than just an iPad video on like because iMovie as soon like if I watch someone's content and I see that little text bar pop up at the bottom with that font that iMovie uses as a default yeah. <laughs> I know straight away these motherfuckers have been either been on a Mac or an iPad editing this video and like it, it's so ingrained in my head now but now yeah. I, I've got Filmora which I'm kind of happy with but kind of not with like I, mm. I, I, I kind of want to upgrade to something else because it's it, it's buggy, but it's, yeah. it's alright. Yeah, it's alright, though. But, um, yeah, anyway. Yeah, that's basically the history of Trailer Dash Y. We'll get yep. into future content later. Mm-hmm. Uh, but first, I'll let you introduce yourself and how you got onto YouTube. Yeah, so this is a hell of a story, um, because I have a long history on YouTube and uh, a lot of failed projects. But I don't, like... And kind of like you mentioned, there's kind of a point where you get to where it's like, what's the point anymore? But it's like, I always look back on these things and I'm like, well, it made me happy at the time. And I always like to think that I shouldn't ever regret something that made me happy or made me smile or whatever. And that's kind of sappy and I'm not usually sappy or anything like that. But it's just like, if you don't like, just because especially as a kid, there's like, you're very limited in what you can actually like do creatively and yeah. so it made me like it like satisfied me at the time so i was like oh this is cool i'm like making stuff and putting it out there and it, and you know it made me happy so that was so i don't really regret it at all even though if they, it was definitely some pretty shitty content and <laughs> uh <laughs> but yeah like i said it, it was it was fun at the time so yeah. um anyway uh, i started making videos with my very first channel which I haven't, uh, I don't think I've told pretty much any, only a very small number of people know about this channel, but it's called Mega Pikachu Dude. I made it when I was, I think, <laughs> nine, nine or ten. So nice. either eight, 2008 or 2009. And, wow, uh, so that, that, that's very, that's very OG YouTube. Then. Yes, very early on. And I was inspired by, like, 
It was a lot of, like, live-action stupid stuff, but it was all, like, nerdy live-action stupid stuff. But, you know, it had that very, like... You could tell that I was... That, like, you didn't have to watch very much to know that I was, like, a ten-year-old kid trying to make something stupid, you know? And, yeah. um... So... I gotta burp. Never mind, I don't... Uh, that didn't come out. Oh, well. Um, so... I started with, I can't remember if I posted, I'm sure I posted something before this, but the first, it still exists because I can't fucking log into it. I don't know the password. Oh, <laughs> so, God. Um, you could still find it. If you want to look it up, you can. Um, it's like, it's so I it's feel, still on I, I really want to Google and pick a Pikachu, too. It's, right it's still on YouTube. Uh, if, fuck it, you can. Um, uh, but, keep keep um, talking. Yeah, so it's, uh, so the first videos I think that are still on there are the ones of me and my buddy playing Poke Park with the, for the Wii, um, which is one of still one of a really good game. I love that game. I, I played it a few years ago on the on my gaming channel, but I still love that game. And it, we showcased um, using um, <coughs> like, do you guys you know that fucking there's like a flip video recorder it's just like this really really basic video like like cam video camera like a camcorder but really shitty so i used it and we recorded the tv of my friend playing the hidden characters in poke park wii those are the first videos <laughs> i think you'll find on there they actually got a lot of views surprisingly enough but um yeah those are the earliest videos i think <clears throat> and then from there it's just obviously a 10 year old kid trying to think he, like thinking he's funny but he's actually not um there's randomosity i think which is me yeah. and my, the, uh, the same me and the same friend um doing stupid shit there wasn't ever like there there's like two or three three or four episodes to that series that never went anywhere we had no plan for it I've, it doesn't make I've any found sense it. i found yeah. it and wow <laughs> it doesn't I make it doesn't make any sense it, there's I no there was it. Yeah, you don't. Need I haven't to. watched it yet, but um, I haven't watched anything yet. But I would like to say that your very first video sh uh, in the thumbnail is literally a Tangrowth T posing, and uh, I love it. So yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's beautiful. Awesome. So um, yeah. Um, so there's like randomosity. There was, um, there was. We started. It was a lot of me and my friend. Uh, it's basically my. my pretty much my best friend of about 10 years maybe um we still talk all the time but he goes to for those of you who don't know i attend uh, virginia tech which is in um western virginia and he goes to university of alabama um which is probably about a seven hour drive but he's he lived uh he went to a university that's really close to us um last year but he recently transferred because he didn't feel like the curriculum there was good so but we still talk all the time we uh hang out and chat on discord all that stuff and i'm planning to go visiting to go visit him in alabama sometime uh before the year ends but yeah so it's, it was me and him we've like i said we've been best friends for probably about 10 years um and we did a lot of really stupid shit using action figures and plushes and like basically thinking we were funny when we're actually really not at all um <laughs> So there's, I I believe there's like Legend of the Pokemon War or some shit like that, which is one of the most recent videos. I say most recent, it's like 2010, 2011. They um, are all excess of eight years old. So yes. that kind of gives you the general idea of how old yeah. that channel is. So the probably the oldest I was when I ever posted a video in there was 11, and probably 11 years old. So well, one thing I would like to actually mention in the feature channels that bar on the side. Silver Games is right down the bottom. Yeah, so, so... So you had Silver Games around the same time. Yes, yeah, so I think... So that's where I was... That's actually the next step. So, um... But yeah, that Mega Pikachu dude, it still exists. If you really, really want to cringe a lot, um... <laughs> you, I encourage you to go watch it. Um, honest, I, I obviously... I can't really do much of anything about it at this point, but, um... If, unless I figure out the password. Even if I did figure out the password, I doubt I would delete it because just because there's so much gold on there. Um, I am definitely going back and watching some of that <laughs> after this there's recording. There's so much gold on there. And um, so, yeah, it's... But it was a lot of fun at the time, so I don't regret it. After that, um, after Mega Pikachu Dude kind of stopped, um, my buddy and I were like... Again, we started all these random live-action stuff and we had no plan for it. We were just like... You know, obviously, I would never start something unless I had a plan for it now, but, um, yeah, um, this, it just didn't go anywhere, and so eventually he and I were just like, yeah, this is, 
this is not going to happen. Um, so, obviously, that was around 2009. So, I was originally inspired to make videos by, like, a lot of the OGs. So, like, Smosh um, and their live-action stuff. Nigahiga, all that stuff. So, I was... Just because they did a lot of live-action stuff. And I was like, hey, I like Pokemon a lot. And, you know, I've liked Pokemon basically my whole life. Um... And so I was like, oh, yeah, I can incorporate my Pikachu plush or whatever into my stupid live action things. And so that's what I did. Um, and out came Mega Pikachu Dude from my anus. So, <laughs> yeah, that, that's the what, story what a, what of, a name. of that. Uh, uh, you know, you, predict, you predicted Mega Revolution. I was going to say, I literally made that before X and Y came out in 2013. <laughs> um, so I, pred predicted I just like to say, Revolution. I predicted Mega Evolution. That's all. Yep. Um, no, I'm just, obviously I didn't. But um, and, you predi and you predicted dudes as well? You predicted yes, them. I predicted so uh, dude be becoming a, uh, a slang word uh, in the dictionary. Yep, that was all me. Um yeah <laughs> so that's definitely um, an accolade <laughs> oh yeah that's a good oh, accolade oh yeah and um but yeah so after that probably i took about a year off from doing youtube and i think i started silver what's now known as silver games in uh 2012 so i was probably 13 or either 12 or 13 um and that was obviously if you were on youtube at the time uh you know that was the peak of minecrafter youtubers so oh, yeah. yeah, so I was inspired to make gaming content in about 2012 to 2013. Um, but the real question is, did you make Minecraft videos? Oh, believe me, I did. They're not there oh, anymore because he did. I he did. did it, and uh, I did a lot. It was basically all Minecraft for a, a period of time, um, and it was basically again. I was probably 13 years old because um, I turned 13 in 2012. So. I, it was basically just me recreating all of, like, the shit that all the popular Minecraft YouTubers did at the time. My favorite at the time was Sky Does Minecraft. Um, he's still making YouTube videos somehow. He went through a lot of shit in recent years, but he's still making Minecraft content somehow. Um, but he's genuinely a nice guy. Um, seems really cool. Um, I was also watching people like Deadlocks, Minecraft Universe, uh, and Venom. All of those are like OG Minecraft YouTubers, and they were like making all this really funny Minecraft content. And I, every so often, I go back and watch, and it's still actually entertaining. So, like, it, it's it was just good content. So, then, thirteen-year-old me tries to get fight, figures out how to use Bandicam for the first time, and oh, starts God. recording Minecraft on my shitty laptop. Um, could barely handle it, but. It worked. I, I was lucky to be one of the one of the young people that missed Bandicam and how everyone started using Bandicam. Like I never yeah. have touched it. And good I, for you. It, it sucks. Yeah. <laughs> God damn. Yeah. I just all the old videos just like recorded with Bandicam or yeah, whatever. Bandicam.com at the top. Thing is on the top. Oh yep. God. Bandicam.com. So yeah, I used that for a long time. I did mod showcases. I did adventure maps with my friends. Actually, I think one of the adventure maps I did with the same with my best friend who I did Mega Pikachu dude with is still up there. We did a Christmas adventure map. That was interesting. Um, but again, I was like 15 or 14 at the time when we did that. Um, so I think it still exists. But he and I both still play Minecraft every so often. Um, yeah, it's just so. Uh, and I, I still use Silver Games to this day. I um, when I first made it, I put it in the featured channels of Mega Pikachu Dude because I could still log into that account, and now I can't because I don't know the password. Um, so that's how I got there. But that was the first time I used um this like so all my accounts are linked to the same email, um except for Mega Pikachu Dude apparently. But um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh that's how I got there, um. But yeah, I used Silver Games. I made a lot of mine, like I said, mo uh, mod showcases. Uh, I loved doing Minecraft mods at the time, just installing them and like seeing how they would change the game. Um, Minecraft is still one of the most innovative games and like most like most creatively satisfying games out there. It does really seem like that. I I, I haven't. I played it briefly. Like all of us in high school played it uh, when the Pocket Edition came out, mm -hmm. and. Like, that's probably my main experience with Minecraft, is when we all were doing the iPad, like, 
playing it on our iPads, and like I briefly played it on uh, my 360, but I just thought the controls were shit, so I didn't. Yeah. So I didn't continue it. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's just seeing the rise and fall, like not rise and fall, but like the rise and then the kind of diminishing, and then the rise again of popularity of Minecraft is fucking fascinating. Yeah, it's like, so it's once weird. Again, it's once again one of the most popular games in the world. Like it's back to the top now. Yeah. So, but yeah, again, like I said, uh, Minecraft is like one of the most, probably, actually, not even one of, it's probably the most creatively satisfying game out there. Like, there's just so much you can do with it, there's, you can play the story mode and survival, you can create just about anything you want in creative mode, there's stuff for everyone there. Um, speedrunning community, there's so much you can do with Minecraft, and I'm really happy it's back on top now, um, just because I love Minecraft, I think it's incredible, um, Obviously, Notch has had some questionable opinions since then, but we'll kind of ignore that. Again, it's a lot of to do with, you know, artists versus the art. So we'll just take the art, and that is Minecraft, and accept it into our hearts. Yes, Um, indeed. uh, I don't know a lot about the Notch situation. I know he's kind of a lunatic, but anyway, I I won't go further with that. I I honestly, I don't know much about even what you're talking about, because the only thing I know about Notch is that he sold Minecraft to Microsoft, and that's it. Yeah, so so, so originally Minecraft was created by this guy, Notch. Um, Yeah, that that much I know. Yeah, and he has, like, ever since he, like, in in more recent years, he's, like, had some questionable, like, political opinions, and people have not I mean, again, there's not really a such thing as questionable political opinion, since, again, it's an opinion, but, um, like, you know, uh, the internet is, um, is m- mostly liberal, so when someone comes out as, like, very conservative, it's like, they get a lot of backlash on the internet, um, yeah. which is something I've noticed, uh, so... And and uh, but a lot of the stuff that I've seen on that I've read about Notch saying is really just plain like not thought out, and that's why I'm like I don't talk about politics a lot, but I really I'm I'm very much moderate when it comes to politics. I just don't uh, find I just don't uh, find myself like educated enough to really form an opinion because I don't spend my time educating myself on politics, so I therefore well, I don't want to create an uneducated opinion. I understand, like, some parts of politics, like, I get it, there's certain things people can and can't do, and certain promises people make and can't can't, can't keep, but I, um, especially in Australia, I'm at the point where it's just like, you have to vote for the lesser of two, two evils, it want, there, yes. it's gonna be shit no matter what. That's how it is in America as well. Yeah. C- Sorry, we just, I took a little bit of political tangent there, politics pissed me off, end of story like there's a lot of uh, just about every side is wrong in some way that's all i wanted <laughs> yeah. to say so they all have um, their, they all yeah, have their everyone's and dumb flaws. everyone jumps to conclusions too quickly without taking the time to educate themselves that's all i'm saying so anyway yes. aside from the political tangent um i from there um i actually uh this all um, again, this all kind of correlated with the release of Pokemon X and Y, which I actually vividly remember because um, I was with one of my other friends um, at the time. I was up. Th- uh, he has a house. His parents actually have a house up in the mountains, um, which is probably a few like an hour and a half north of where I am right now. Um, I'm also in the mountains, but uh, they're in the Appalachians, a little bit to the northeast of us. So they have they have a house there, and I was visiting up there for the weekend because just kind of hang out and um i remember because before we left actually i think it was before we left um no it might i can't remember exactly but um ar- like around this time my buddy and i we both got pokemon he got pokemon x and i got pokemon y we went to the, like fucking walmart or some shit and we got pokemon x and y and this was around the same time i started the sil- what is now the silver games channel originally it was called i think silver gaming 100 i think i don't know but um yeah something along those lines and that was so that was around the same time um and then after we 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 spent that pretty much that whole weekend we were up in the mountains we were supposed to be exploring and shit we basically played pokemon all weekend um and then we came <laughs> back um, I believe it was Saturday. I can't remember the day exactly released. We came back. We I th- it was either n- the next weekend after we 
were playing after we got first got the games or that same weekend they debuted on Cartoon Network the first two episodes of Pokemon X and Y anime and I was immediately like this again this was probably this was late 2013 so I was 14 at the time um I was absolutely enthralled by it. Like, the first two episodes were, like, immediate... Like, I had watched the Pokemon anime every so often um, up until that point. I really liked Diamond and Pearl. I kind of skipped through Black and White after Ash lost to a Snivy. Um, but... Yeah, yeah. I, I don't blame you for that. I kind of did as well. Yeah, I, I, I kind of like, skipped through Black and White. I kind of got out of it during a, Black and White. Like, Snivy kicked Pikachu's ass, and then, like, I thought Z- Zekrom was cool, and yeah. then Iris was just a bitch, Annoying. And I was like, nah, yeah. I'm not gonna so watch So I kinda, this. I kinda every so often would watch Black and White, like, whenever it happened to be on, I would be like, oh, alright, whatever. Um, but I really liked Diamond and Pearl, and I first got into it with Battle Frontier, actually. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I was immediately captured and thralled by the, uh, XY anime, the first two episodes. They didn't actually start releasing more episodes until uh, probably a month or two after that but I was like I want to see more of this so I went out of my way to start watching it in Japanese because the episodes came out sooner so because I got more into that I started watching more YouTube content related to that so that's when I got into talking about the Pokemon anime because I watched this guy um, a lot of a lot of his content this guy called KG Prestige um, whose channel is deleted now but he has a new channel where he still does the same thing um, but he's he's really cool um, just a really, like, a good, like, re- I, I, I don't really watch his stuff anymore, but at the time I was really, like, I really liked watching him talk about the series. So, eventually I got into that. So, on the Silver Gaming channel, I eventually started uploading the Pokemon anime discussion videos, where I would kind of talk about what I thought about some episodes or the overall, like, series so far, and that would kind of mix in to my gaming content that I was uploading at the same time. Eventually, I was like, this probably went on for a year, maybe a year and a half, and I was like, well, I can't, and you know, XY, this was probably 2015 when this happened, um, I, I was like, I can't really, I don't really want to upload all of this to the same channel. It might have even been 2014. It was either early 2014 or, or early 2015 or late 2014. I was like, I don't really want to upload all of this to the same channel. So I made the new channel, which is now Silver Talks, um, it was originally Silver Network. Uh, I don't know what compelled me to name it that, but that's what happened. Um, Network. Yeah. Sounds official. Net- Sounds Network. Formal. Um, and it was anything but that. But so <laughs> that's where that's where all my Pokemon anime related content went. Um, and then I still run that channel to this day. I upload anime reviews, all that fun stuff. I it was a lot of Pokemon anime at the beginning, and I've since branched out. Um, and but Silver I, I re- Talks is where the location of our ranked video on the movies are, yes. is it not? That yes, was a really so fun ch- project. Yes, yeah, so check that out, so iCard and all that shit. Woo! Yes. Woo! Anyway. Yeah, anyway, so I still continue. run that channel to this day. I like, um, I, basically, I, I don't really have an upload schedule, but um, if I ever watch an anime that I really like, or some news comes out like it did recently where I want to talk about it, that's where I put all my stuff. So... Silver Gaming, on the other hand, Silver, what is now Silver Games, is not really runs consistently. Basically, I um, upload random shit. The last playthrough I did was uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, which I had a lot of fun with since I had never played it. Um, but I don't really plan on doing any more gaming content for the most part. Um, that is uh, kind of done, because I really... I've found that I enjoy myself more when I'm not pressured to give commentary especially by myself um i think i think a gaming channel would have legs if i was with someone um but like just given myself i find i have i enjoy myself a lot more when i'm not pressured to give commentary and i'm just able to go through it on my own so yeah that's absolutely fair yeah so i I find a difficulty like uh, on my few gaming videos i I, at times find a difficulty difficult to talk about things yeah that's why a lot of my trend plays are actually me and a mate playing the game because it's so much easier to bounce. it's a lot easier that way you have someone else to like bounce your like commentary off of so exactly yeah so event that's why that so I do want. I do want to use it. Um, I the last playthrough that I remember really, really enjoying myself with was a uh, was a playthrough visual novel called Crystalline, um, which is by um, Pixel Fade. 
they're making like they're in the process of releasing chapter by chapter a new visual novel so when that comes out i think sometime next year i'm probably going to put it on like play through it on the gaming channel and uh put it up but the only reason i really like the visual novels is because again you're rea it's basically reaction stuff you're reacting to what the the characters say on screen so they're basically giving you material to make jokes or say something stupid like you're not you're not like oh here i go i'm running through the dungeon slash he's dead you know like you yeah. you're getting actual dialogue and characters to basically make fun of or whatever like yeah i i have a mini i have, I have mini I have a mini story to talk about how, like, a bit of my content, like gaming and all that, how I kind of wanted to go into it, but stepped away from it instead. But mm -hmm. I'll talk about that a bit later. But yes, continue. I have, yeah. There's a lot of interesting stories about gaming, yeah. especially that I got. But yeah, yeah. Anyway. So um, that that that's pretty much the plans for the um, the Silver Games channel. Not really gonna upload anything to it, but it's there. Um, you can watch all my previous gaming content. I don't really plan on deleting any of it. Um, maybe if an, I, I think the only other occasion that I would probably bring it back for is like if a new Sonic game came out that I really wanted to play. Because um, I played Sonic Forces when it came out and had a fun time with that, even if the oh, game God. was like three hours long. I thought I, I enjoy I, I enjoyed Sonic Forces. It just wasn't as good as it should have been. Um, I, I don't I don't I haven't played any Sonic games, but the only thing I know of Sonic Forces is Infinite. That's woo! a fuck. Love that's that a lad. dope song. That's a dope. That's the fucking no 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 the song, not the lad. The song. <laughs> oh, he's he was kind of a shit villain, but that's mostly like my when I went and, and reviewed Sonic Forces, I was like, yeah, if this game didn't have a total playtime of like three and a half hours and was instead dragged on for like maybe. 20 hours of gameplay this would be great but yeah this i they took the gotta go fast thing a little too literally um <laughs> so um yeah I, I, that's probably the only other thing i would probably i might bring it back for um just because i really like uh, e even if they're bad i enjoy playing through sonic games and i've been following sonic for a really long time um so yeah that's for that's pretty much that. Again, I also run Silver Talks that still uploads every so often whenever I have something I want to talk about. Um, and then, as far as music goes, which is my main thing now, um, my first video was uploaded in late 2015, I believe in November of 2015. Um, my first song ever went up then. Um, and that was probably after a few months of playing around with FL Studio, maybe, eh, maybe like a month and a half. Um, of just playing around with FL Studio and figuring it out, and it was an Undertale remix, and because that was when, that was just after Undertale came out, um, I believe Undertale came out in September or October of 2015, um, so that was just after it had come out, and so obviously the soundtrack is filled to the brim with amazing music, so essentially yes. what I did was, um, I was inspired to make music in the first place by people like Name Wants to Battle and Glitch X City, so th my remixes that started out because I was like, well, I don't really have a microphone and I can't play guitar. So, and that was when I had just started learning to play guitar. I'd probably been practicing for a couple months playing guitar, but I didn't have the equipment or anything. So, I started making these remixes, and they weren't really remixes, they were basically just me recreating the song using like these kind of weird instruments that I'd figured out that I had like found and it was like the same stuff over and over again eventually like eventually I started using more and more stuff um, but it was basically the same overall sound over and over again with the Undertale remixes again they uh, they uh, they aren't really good in fact they're pretty bad but that they are <laughs> on my uh, they are on my band camp and if for some reason people like them, they can download them for free. So, because I was like, I mean, people seem to well, like them. So I was like, I mean, if heck, heck, if you want to download them, go ahead. Well, I, well, when I first discovered you, I did download them. Yeah. And yeah, they're they're okay. They're okay. <laughs> they're nothing. They're really nothing on my on my new stuff. But God. 
Yeah, looking yeah, li listening no, I... back on them, I'm like, yeah, there's so much wrong with this. The production's bad. The like the pr in fact the production is miserable. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of stuff wrong with it. It really wasn't like most of them weren't actually remixes. They were just basically covers, like the exact same song and just like a slightly different style with the production just being shit. But um, yeah, eventually I evolved. Um, there's a, a a story there. Um, I made remixes for probably a just under a year, um, maybe eight months, eight months, nine months or so. Um, eventually, I was like, I can play guitar, I have equipment, now I can make metal stuff. So my first ever attempt at metal was uh, Explorers of Metal, because I really love the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers soundtrack. So... Now I Go ahead. I really enjoy the remasters. The yes. remastered version of that album, mm -hmm. I do quite enjoy, actually. Yes. So that was my first attempt. The original is, I don't think, still available online. I still have all of the original attempts at the songs, but originally it was 11 metal covers of uh, Mystery Dungeon songs. And again, the production was really bad, but it was like my first attempt at like making the rock stuff. And <clears throat> in retrospect, especially after the remaster, I'm really happy with how it came out. Um, I recently... It was actually a couple months ago. I, I did a year later in 2017, because um, uh, the first Explorers of Metal came out in November of 2016. Yeah, which is a year after I started uh, making stuff online in the first place. Um, so that came out in November of 2016, and that was around the same time I started putting out my stuff to like on uh, Spotify and all that. Um, mm. So, yeah. Um, so that was when that happened. And then a year later... I did a remaster of that where I added nine new tracks, and three of them weren't metal, but they were, I added, so it went up to 20 tracks. Um, so that was Explorers of Metal Remastered. Again, the production was very questionable, but um, in recent months, I actually went back and just redid the whole thing. Not like redid, but I remastered it again, now that I've got everything figured out for real, and um, re-uploaded it, and now it sounds really nice. So, do you have yes. another remastered, remastered album? Yeah, oh, it was. Yeah. But basically, I was like, so this is, I've just remastered the same album twice. I'm just going to upload it as Explorers of Metal. <laughs> so, you can find it. It's still in stores as Explorers of Metal. It still says it came out in 2017. Uh, it's because I didn't really change anything about the songs themselves. Um, with the first remaster, I did, and obviously, I added like nine new songs. So, that was why it was remastered at the time. But um, now it's just Explorers of Metal. You can still find it. It sounds fine now, <laughs> but I'm really happy. With, I'm really happy with how it came out after two remasters. No, so that was fair, that was my fair. first um, attempt at uh, rock stuff. And then after that, I, I went to. Um, there's a story to be told in between that and uh, my next instrumental album. Um, so around the time I released Explorers of Metal, I first started getting into vocal covers. Obviously, it, this was late 2016, so I was 17 years old at the time, um, and it didn't go over well, let's just say. Um, you can't <laughs> find those a lot of those old vocal covers anymore, although I still have them on my computer, um, just because they are really, really bad, and um, <laughs> because they just, they just didn't... Again, I was 17, I didn't... I, and I sounded like I was 8, so... Um, <laughs> Yeah, you can, I, I got ripped to shreds, basically. I uploaded a, um, a few vocal covers. I uploaded a cover of the first ever Sun and Moon opening, uh, an English cover of the Japanese opening, and uh, got ripped to shreds. And then I uploaded a cover of the first Japanese ending of Sun and Moon in, in English and got ripped to shreds again. So I was like, <laughs> well, this is, this is fine. I'll keep going. I really enjoy this stuff. I made a few other English covers of songs. I did V-Vault, which I did a remaster of recently uh, at the end of last year, which is now sounds fine. Um, I did a cover of Crossing Field from SAO, which I'm planning to do a remaster of sometime. I don't know when, but I really like Crossing Field, so I'll probably try again at some point. Um, and then... Yeah, I was eventually like, okay, I'm getting ripped to shreds. No one seems to really, like, the over, not overwhelming, but, like, a solid majority of the people, like, don't seem to enjoy the vocal covers. So I became really discouraged around early 2017, deleted a lot of those covers, and I was like, well, I don't really, I, you know, I, I became really upset. I was like, I don't know what to do anymore. And eventually I got back 
into making um, instrumental covers. I got excited again about making music with when I started with Swordland, which is my album of SAO uh, soundtrack covers. Those are yep. still out. You can find those. Um, then I transitioned af- after that. I went into Alola Metal with the Sun and Moon OST. Um, more and more stuff. Um, Video Game Covers Volume 1 came out the same year. Um, on and on and on. Uh, uh, original. I did like some kind of original music. I did a lot of stuff in 2017. And it was all instrumental, so that made it a lot easier for me to release them at a rapid pace. So I was able to pretty much pump out a video or even two every two every week. So, and that was around the same time I started doing the Nate Wants to Battle instrumental covers. Um, I can tell they really took off, didn't they? Was yes. Because <laughs> around that time, no one had really done instrumental covers of yes. online artists. So it was quite mm. hard to find. Yeah, so it was, and it was something that I wanted to do because... Um, I wasn't ever planning on making a Nate Wants to Battle vocal cover just because I don't, like, I have a thing with covers where if it's not something, like, substantially different, you have no reason to listen to the cover as opposed to the original. So that's why I only cover something if I'm going to cover it in a different style or cover it in English if it's a Japanese song, whatever. I pretty much have a standard, like, if I'm not changing something about this song, I'm not going to cover it. So... That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. So, because I'm like I, and I can still really enjoy these songs, and still, you know, n- and not necessarily have to cover them, whatever. So, eventually, I, so that's why I did the instrumental covers because I saw a lot of people who were like, "Hey, are you ever gonna release an instrumental of this?" And I was like, "Well, I can do that." So, I can't remember what my first one was. I think it might have been the Hero of Our Time instrumental, and then I went from there. And then people kept requesting more and more, and I was like, "Well, okay." And uh, <laughs> eventually, Sandcastle Kingdoms came out. Um, uh, I did all of those. Paid and Exposure came out next year. Did all of those. Um, and originally, it was a lot of fun, especially when with Sandcastle Kingdoms, because I learned a lot by covering Nate's music. Because I I wasn't familiar with a lot of songwriting at the time, and the songwriting that I did know was pretty shitty. So I learned a lot by covering Nate's music, and even Paid and Exposure, because it was a lot different than his previous work. I learned a lot from that as well, even though by that point I was kind of exhausted of it. Um, well, I, I don't know. I don't know if you'll remember um, from the amazing online artist video on you. That's actually how I initially found you. Yes, I think I, I do remember. That. Because I really loved the song "Stop Rewind" and really wanted to hear an instrumental version of it, mm-hmm. and I searched it up and I found your video, yep. and I was just like. Oh yeah, that shit's my jam. And uh, subscribe. So there Ooh, you go. Oh yeah. But um oh, yeah. yeah, so that got a lot of attention that kind of um the in- the instrumental stuff really was able to like kind of catapult my music career back on track. So I they got a lot more attention than a lot of my other other covers and so I in the end I don't regret them even though <laughs> I did a whole lot and uh eventually they beca- they became tiresome. But um yeah, and now I'm really happy being able to... I use that to kind of move into doing my own stuff. Um, obviously, like, I did a lot of stuff, a little less stuff in 2018, um, and I'm doing a, uh, almost even less in 2019. Like, I'm going slightly less and less. Um, but, yeah, um, I, I a lot of stuff came out in 2018, um, and then now with t- in 2019 just released a Pokemon album that I'm super proud of. Probably my, the fit, like my favorite full album I've ever done. Uh, just so my, uh, that and the Pokemon covers have been getting a lot of attention, which I'm really happy about. Um, because they are some of my best work. They are indeed. Yes. They are very much high tier compared to all the, uh, a lot of the other work you've done. They yeah. are very much high tier. Yeah. So I'm really, I'm really proud of that album. Happy how it came out. Um, and, so, and, you know, I released a uh, original album in 2018. Uh, again, it was probably a little bit, like... It was probably... I probably jumped the gun on that. Uh, every so often I listen back to some of the songs, and I'm like, yeah, this isn't, like, as good as I want it to be. And, um, like, it, like, the original album, like, it's fine. Generations, like, I'm still proud of that album, but I'm like, every time I listen to it, I'm like, I should have 
done better. I should have waited until I was more practiced, more refined, and then well, with, released a with original age, album. With age and experience, that, like, knowledge comes to you prior. Yeah. Like, over the years, like, I look back now, like, I look back at my original channel and said... I why did I have those internal fears when I was that young that was stupid why yeah. did I delete and get rid of that stuff I really loved and even now I look back a year and look at my book and think there is so much more potential with that yeah. book I could have done so much more like yeah. it's a tiny piece of shit I could have made it so big but yeah it, it, it with time comes reflection and you always everyone always looks back on their older work and just says that was shit. No, I could have done. I could have done something more. Like every, everyone's always judgmental yeah. of this stuff. It's, oh, yeah. it's just commonplace. Yeah, and you know, I, again, I'm like, it's really. I'm really glad that um, like the music stuff has been doing as well as it has been. But I'm really excited to get into making more. Um, I have some original stuff planned. I guess I could like at this point. That's pretty much the entire YouTube thing. I have a vlog channel where I upload a. A load of, well, not really a lot, but like, I have a few stupid videos that you can find. It's just called Silver Vlogs. I have a few unboxings of music equipment. I have um, a few dumb videos. I did a, I did a cover of, um, what's it called? Uh, Asian Jake Paul. I did a cover of Asian <laughs> Jake Paul to a, uh, to a, a completely different beat. I don't know what happened there. That's a funny story, actually. I think I was just driving home one day from, like, getting food, and I was listening to this song, and I was like, uh, and it was the song that I eventually sang, or rapped Asian Jake Paul over top of, and I was like, and I was just rapping Asian Jake Paul over top of it while I was in the car, like, sitting at a stoplight, and I was like, well, I can turn this into a video. I think you put that in your Discord, and I remember hearing it, and I'm yeah. like, oh my god, what is this? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what the yeah. hell is going on? Yeah. So that that I upload a lot. Any stupid shit I managed to come up with, th I, th I will still probably upload to that channel very rarely. But any stupid shit that I managed to come up with, it'll probably go there. So if there's any if there's any takeaway from this, you need to go subscribe to Silver Storm, Silver Games, Silver Talk, <laughs> Silver Vlogs, Mega Pikachu Dude, and Trailer Dash Y. So don't, su <laughs> don't subscribe to Mega Pikachu Dude. That's not releasing any yes. more content anytime soon. Do it. He might. Someone, someone might hack it and make someone a dramatic might comeback. Hack it. You're right, but yeah, it, you feel free to check it out uh, again. Like, <laughs> try. You, you will know, you, and I don't think you should subscribe to uh, Silver, like uh, Silver Games either, because that's not going to be releasing content until like next year or something. So, oh, oh, wait, and also, of course, subscribe to the Fast On podcast. This is the new yeah, this endeavor. channel. Don't forget this about this one. Yes, we need we need to promote this one heavily. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything anyway. except this channel. Yeah, no, subscribe to all yeah. of our other channels. Yep, do it. Yeah, so <laughs> and subscribe to Mitch on a bicycle, even though he has we haven't uploaded yeah. there for five years. Fuck it, that's fine. Why not? Do it. Oh god. So uh, yeah, and then I guess I can talk just a little bit about some future stuff. I talked about the future of the other channels I own. Uh, again, like I said, pretty like not really scheduling anything it's just gonna happen when it happens but i still am going to be trying to upload every friday on the music channel i have a album that i'm trying to put out before the end of the year of um pokemon covers like english covers of pokemon anime openings in japanese like japanese anime openings um that should be out hopefully before the end of the year but it might not be before the end of the year we'll have to see um so that, and then I also am working on, uh, as I'm sure you've seen, I've up, uh, if you follow the channel, I've uploaded a couple uh, covers of Pokemon movie endings. That's going to turn into an album eventually, um, once I do enough. And then, what other I'm shit keen for that do one. I have? Yeah, that's that's really fun. I'm really excited about that one. Yeah, no, there's there's one song I know you're planning to do, which I am very very excited for. Which and one? <laughs> the the one from Ranger. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. 
That one I was the, the yeah, one that I yeah. said I have a personal love for. Yes. That's uh, fucking I'm, awesome. I'm really line. excited. I'm going to be doing, uh, you know, like a bunch of cool, really cool songs and really underappreciated songs. So I'm really happy about that one. Um, that's just, that's yes, just, Kate. that's pretty much just a passion project. It essentially, like, came out of when Trent and I were doing the movie thing, and I was like, I was listening to the ending songs, like, God damn, these are fucking good. And, uh, Th that's yeah. You need to ride the Pokemon wave while you're still on it, all right? You're yeah. doing well. You need to keep it going. Oh, I'm keeping, I'm keeping it going. Um, so, yeah, and then I'm also doing, like, at some point, this, this will, this will all be, like, kind of mixed up. I'll do whatever I feel like, and then eventually once all the songs for the album are done, it'll come out as an album. Don't know when that's going to happen, but, um... A bunch of anime covers, miscellaneous anime covers, are going to eventually turn into an album. Uh, a while back, I released my cover of Automas, the new, um, relatively new SAO opening for season three. That was a fun song, um, but I'm going to. That was pretty good. Yeah, I'm going to do a bunch of covers like from SAO, Fairy Tale, um, all that kind of stuff, and kind of just shove it into an album. That's going to happen sometime, probably next year sometime. Um, I'm also going to release um, a small EP. Of which two of the songs are already done. It's three songs um, of me and Robin Artery doing the Pokemon Black and White openings. Um, once we nice. do the last one, those three are going to come out together as a unit, just so they're all together. Um, obviously, two of those are already done, but uh, that's going to be probably sometime this year, if I had to guess. Um, what else? I'm sure there's other things. I have an original album that I'm working on slowly. Um, Anything, anything else? I'm sure there's something else. Um, I'll talk. I'll talk briefly yeah, about plans for myself. Go well, for if you haven't, considering I mainly focus uh, for a while, I've been mainly focusing on YouTube and and um, and my author stuff. I am an author, yeah. and I've been trying to write and come up with ideas for stuff. And I've had this story in my mind, the protector, mm -hmm. and it's gone. Pl it's gone places, and then it's dropped off at other places. And now that I've kind of gotten into full-time work, I've had a little bit of trouble keeping up with writing. Yeah. So, at the moment, my plan for me is to work full-time, obviously. I want to commit to something which I know I'm passionate about. And at the moment, and I hope it remains this, it's this podcast. I yeah. really want this podcast to go places. Yes. I want to continue writing, obviously. And YouTube is, again, something I want to focus on, but it's going to be in a more professional sense. As yeah. in, I had this massive idea of going to Japan at the end of the year and vlogging the whole thing and making it look really crisp and professional. I'm not going to be able to do that now because I don't have the funds for it, mm -hmm. but it's just like I want to do stuff like that. You know what? That's what I try to I do. Can I bring this up on the podcast just so we have it documented? When do, sure. when do you plan to go to Japan? Well, currently... See, the, the problem was I wanted to do it before next year because of the Tokyo Olympics. Right. So, because my personal belief is that next year everything's going to be fucking twice as expensive because of the Olympics. Yep. Um, we could so, go in the after, uh, aftermath of you. Anyway, my idea was I've been wanting to go to Japan. Let's meet there. We could very much do that. That's That was that was what I was going to... I wanted to bring it bring it up to you for a while, and I was like, yeah, this is something that we could absolutely do. We could absolutely Because I've been wanting that, to do, I, go to Japan for a long-ass time, and I think it would same. be dope. So, yeah. Same. See, the, the one thing, though, um, <laughs> the one thing I initially, like, me and a mate, a mate of our, um, me and a mate initially planned on going to Japan, yeah. but then, um, like, I haven't really talked to him in a bit, and then he and his girl, like, his girlfriend now are planning on going to Japan, and I'm like, well, I'm over here, yeah. but I guess our plans kind of, like, fucking died, but that's all right, yeah. man. Yeah, and obviously, but, um, like, our plans so, could change at any time. Like, it's possible that, like, you know, if you wanted to bring someone just so you're not alone on your flight or, you know, same for see, me, whatever. that's the thing. That, that's the thing. I honestly, I don't care. See, because then I have the thought, well, I want to vlog the entire thing, but I also have a bunch of things I want to do. Yeah. Which are kind of obscure, and I know people that are going to Japan and just want to do touristy shit in Japan wouldn't really be interested in. Mm -hmm. So that's why I thought if I go by myself, I can just do, do whatever everything I, want, I yeah. want to do because there's a fuck ton of things I want to do which I know a lot of people wouldn't give a shit about. So, yeah. absolutely. Like, uh, like end of next year or early yeah. 2021 even because mm -hmm. I was told that 
with my work especially, it gets quiet around January, July time. Gotcha. So that's why I'm, tra- I'm internally thinking, maybe not next year because I won't have money. 2021, January, yeah. fucking go there, do whatever I want for about two, three weeks. I'm thinking long last time. And then, yeah, that, that that's kind yeah. of my ideal situation. Mm-hmm. But if you haven't gone to Japan before then and you're still keen on the idea, fuck yeah, man. I'll oh, yeah. go there. I'll do the shit I want to do. We'll meet up and we'll fucking we'll do a live version of this podcast. Hey. <laughs> and, and In our we'll hotel room fuck, and like wake everybody fuck, up. Hey. Yes, Let's go. of course. Fuck yeah. So I have fun. it documented. Yes. This is documented this is January not, now, 2021. Now we have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> right down January 2021. This is the plan. All right. Yes. Seek. So that. But, um, yeah, I don't know if I could do the whole two or three weeks, but definitely like a week or so. I think would be no. Would that's be good. No problem. But yeah. yeah. So that's my plan. I I'm re- I'm rewriting the protector as um, a novel, right? To, yes, as a novel because I basically over the course of of a few years i wrote out the plot of the protector incorporating a bunch of different elements and story ideas i obtained um and i know a lot of them were like mm, but is this kind of like is this idea too similar to this idea mm-hmm. like from some other story yeah. so i kind of changed up a lot of things and made a completely original plot that expanded for probably the length of at least 20 light novels. <laughs> and if you know if you know light novels, they're yeah, they're not exactly full length novels, but they're not tiny pieces of shit either. Yeah. They are quite expansive. So I had this plot that would have gone for 20 volumes and I was so fucking keen for it. I wrote volume one and yeah, it wasn't a great success, but it's my first ever book. Right. I wasn't expecting a great success. Yeah. And then then it, everything kind of happened at once. I explained in my latest mm. vlog. It all kind of happened at once where work was getting quieter. I was running out of money and then I lost everything for my book. Yeah. As in the program Remember I was that. using to store everything on kind of just went bye-bye. It corrupted Yeet. and died and <laughs> fucking yeeted itself out of my hard drive memory. So yeah. I still retain a lot of the information of the original plot i know a lot of what's going to happen but the amount of changes i also made when writing and getting volume run one ready to publish i kind of like didn't update the rest of the plot like the re- the rest of it and like then i became lost of what i changed and what i hadn't changed yeah. and then like every it became too complicated even for me to handle i was purposely going to make it complicated for the reader so then they would have to think about well what the fuck's going on here but then right. it became so complicated even i couldn't keep up yeah. with it so <laughs> that's a problem yeah it is a <laughs> massive problem so now i've retained a lot of my favorite ideas from the plot and i'm turning it into a novel mm-hmm. so i know how i want the first novel to go i know where i want it to end if it does well i can continue with the story that i'm passionate about yeah there are a few other stories that i kind of wrote a few chapters for um in high school now one thing that i lost it was a book yeah i, I wrote about five chapters of it and it was a book called change mm-hmm. Um, the plot was essentially, it, it's, it's funny that I met you, Gus. Um, yeah. the plot was an Australian kid. Yeah. His parents were cops. He's heavily into music and plays guitar. Mm-hmm. And he is just playing Xbox one night and he gets a call, um, from the chief of police. Both of his parents, who are both officers, both got killed in the line of duty. Mm-hmm. So he has to move to his closest relative because he's still under 18. And his closest relative is his uncle who lives in America. So I did a deep dive heap of research on America. I forgot. I think I based him in Chicago. Uh And so he moved to Chicago and then his uncle worked on like one of the massive stadiums nearby. So he was always out like for all his different sporting events. And uh, he was the kid. I forgot his name. Uh, he was home by himself, so he kind of lost his passion for music and all that. And when he got into school, he kind of like uh, a bunch of people 
well, Gabe Schiff being Australian, but then he like found a few people that wanted him as a, uh, to join their band. Uh-huh. And like I had this idea long term of him basically uh, because he left his bandmates in Australia and he joined this new band in America, there was going to be like a massive clash of uh, foreign bands and he was going to have to face his old band off in a massive like, uh, battle of the bands type <laughs> of deal. And I was, I was going to make a reunion thing. And like, I wrote this character as well. That was his love interest who is, a, who was great at the piano. Mm-hmm. And she was going to basically show that she loved music to him as well because she never showed that she liked music to anyone before. Yeah. And I had this massive plot and I, I printed out a few drafts to give to friends for them to check out. And then I lost it on my iPad nice. because I wrote everything on my iPad at that time. One of them still has the original draft, but they can't find it because <laughs> they kept it, but they can't find it. But Oof. the reason I talk about this is because... There's one chap- one of those chapters is actually my favourite piece of writing I've ever done. Nice. It is- I think it's the best piece of writing I've ever done. And, and I was in year 10. I didn't think I was that great of a writer, yeah. but even remembering what it was about. It was about um, this, the bloke coming home from school, seeing a note from his uncle saying, here's some money, uh, there's a pizza place down the road, I'm, I, I won't be home till late. Yeah. So he walks down the road and he's admiring the scenery and then he sees the pizza place. He goes in and one of the nerdy kids from his school is actually working there. Huh. And no one really talked to him because he was a nerdy shit. Yeah. And um, he talks to the kid and then they go back uh, into like a living room type area because it's like a half house, half kitchen. Like yeah. Like a half pizzeria and the kids just got pizza on the ground and they I wrote such vivid descriptions for these pizzas <laughs> because I have a massive knack for like creative pizzas like one of them was fucking like the best meat lovers like my ideal meat lovers pizza nice and I fucking like made such vivid descriptions of everything and the and like lighting of the room and their conversation about because this nerdy kid was essentially going to be the one that controls uh, the audio and the smoke screens and everything for when they're on stage gotcha so that's how the nerdy kid was going to play into it and uh, but I know it doesn't sound that interesting when I'm explaining it like this but it was my absolute favorite piece of writing nice. and i really want to try and find the remain the yeah. last piece of draft <laughs> here the last remaining the, like change the last remaining the, semblances of what was of that whole i thing. Not, yes and it was so fucking good but i can't find it and then and then there was another story I started writing where it was basically a mixture of Gears of War and High School of the Dead. <laughs> so it was sort of zombie related, and then it yeah. was basically how the like the army is fighting against the zombies, but then like because they've lost their ranks, they kind of just get anyone who wants to fight a gun. Yeah. And the main character fucking joins him, and they're on the front lines. He loses his family. He finds more like he uh, he loses some friends, and then they like some join the army to fight the zombies, some don't. And then they yeah. like they basically turn one of the capital cities of the I think it was Australia, I think it was Adelaide, I think it was basically in Adelaide. Mm-hmm. They turn Adelaide into like a stronghold fortress and shit. Nice. And that was kind of like the idea. And I already wrote the first two chapters, and the first chapter was him staying up late to watch wrestling, and then going for a walk and encountering a zombie that chases him huh. and it was the fucking it was dope but I don't have that either it, 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 was, it was I think it was called Escape the Dead it was kind of like one yeah, of those yeah. stereotypical uh, zombie zombie related titles but um yeah so I'm gonna try and revive those stories nice. if I can but at the moment yeah I'm mainly working on the protector when I've got time to write yeah. and uh um, yeah, so the Protector, YouTube, the Firestorm podcast, and obviously my work. Yeah. So, like my actual fucking full time job. Yeah. So, yeah, that's kind of all what I'm focusing on at the yeah. moment. That's all my future I, uh, endeavors. I am obviously busy with uh, my education at the moment. I'm a sophomore in college, um, so I've got this year and two more years until I get my degree. Um, actually, I almost feel like once I have a full time job, I'll be a little bit like more free you know because like right now i'm busy with class and then also homework on top of that um i think once i actually have a full-time like because when i went to school i was very good at like 
coming home from school after like what seven eight hours and getting on my computer or whatever and doing work or whatever just I was very good at managing my time when I had a set like time period where I was going to be out doing something um, and in that yeah. case it was school and in college everything's very much free form I'm like I go to class at the same time you know for the whole week I, I only have like f- I think four maybe three like classes I have four different subjects I'm studying but I only have like three different classes so I go to two different classes every day and those are all uh-huh. at the same time every week so I mean I have that but then the time that I work on homework and that I dedicate to like going out and doing stuff because obviously I'm I if, if you don't know Virginia Tech's a pretty damn big college we have I think 30,000 undergraduates so Fucking yeah hell. so we it's a pretty damn big school so I, there's a lot of times I have to set aside to like just going out and like you know just trying to be social um, because I'm yeah. I'm not really a social person person per se like i enjoy like i do get energy like being around people but only if they're people that i actually do enjoy being around so um like and i I enjoy hanging out with my friends and all that stuff so but i recently now that i've settled in i've kind of been able to dedicate more time to being able to work on my own projects um which is really nice um so that's pretty much uh, i'm supposed i'm likely going to be getting uh, a part-time at some point um, just so I can make a little bit of money, um, and like that'll probably get me like fifty to hundred dollars every week, um, alongside what I'm doing. Like I won't be working a lot. I'll probably be working anywhere from like five to ten hours a week, so not a lot, but um, just a few hours where I can just make a little money. Um, and other than that, I have the music stuff I'm doing, and then um, and then I, what I've noticed is that. A lot of times with music, it's like you sit there, or at least for me, I sit there and stare at it for a while, and I'm like, well, what am I going to do? Like, I don't know (laughs) how, like, how do I, like, because I'll have a project in mind, and I'll be like, okay, time to start, and then I'll open up an FL Studio file, and I'll look at it, and I'll stare at it for about 10 minutes, and I'll be like, okay, what do I do? And I (laughs) notice that if I stop thinking about it and just do it, most projects, especially covers, don't take me more than a couple hours. So that's that's what it's like with my writing. Like I, I sit there yeah. for a while and think, wait, what was my idea again? But once yeah. I actually like get into typing, I'm like, fuck. Yeah, there's no woo! stopping. Yeah, four pages done. Nice. Yeah, but, um, I did a uh, I did a song. I think it was yesterday, and uh, I was just like, and it was one that I'd been looking at for a while. I was just like, okay. Where do I take this song? For, and then, for those of you who don't know, I'm sure I can reveal this. I'm in the middle of soundtracking a visual novel, which has been a whole lot of fun. Uh, I'm Woo! doing, yeah, it's a whole. I'll send you the soundtrack if you want. Um, Fuck what yeah. I have so far, um, it's been a really good experience for me uh, musically because I've been able to take my stuff in different directions, and I've learned a lot being able to do that. Um, being able to create a vibe or a tone with music is something that's really important. And when you soundtrack a game, you have a lot of different moods that you have to capture with music. And uh, I don't actually, I don't actually know a lot about the story that I'm actually soundtracking. They basically just give me info: what do they want? What kind of moods am I trying to capture based on the setting and the characters? And that's what I that's what I do and they've and the people I work with are super cool um, and they've they've just been really supportive and nice of what I've been doing uh, and that's really awesome so I've had this has been a great experience being able to kind of experiment with music in ways that I wouldn't have had a chance to try otherwise um, so being able to do that is really cool so I did a, a boss theme um, yesterday, hey. yeah. So we there's nice. in the in the game there's ten bosses. I've I did one a while ago, and then I did one boss theme a while ago, which was also very different um, from most of the stuff I've done personally. And then again, uh, I finished. I had like a base for a song, and I had an idea of where I wanted to take it. But I was like, okay, what do I do? I don't really know where I want to go from here. And then eventually, I started writing like guitar and I started writing bass and then all of a sudden fast forward a couple hours I was done with the song 
So that it was just like it's just like you have to start doing stuff. Like you have to actually get into it and stop thinking about it. And then once you do that, it's like, wow, I have product. I have finished thing. So yeah, it, it's it's just been a uh, it's been really fun to be able to do that. Um, That's awesome, man. Yeah. Other than that, um, just a lot of music. I actually like other than going to school, like occasionally chatting chatting with my parents. Occasionally going to sporting events, occasionally hanging out with my friends and doing music. That's basically my entire life. Like, there's not much more to know. <laughs> yeah, um, my my, so. my daily my daily routine now that I've actually got full time work is like yeah. it used to be just whatever the fuck happens that week because I was very casual with my yeah. work previously. But now it's more like I work most days and. I gotta do notes and stuff for work as well. Then, like, with games, especially nowadays, I only keep up to date with the series that I, like, really love. Mm -hmm. Like, most recently, it's been Gears 5. So yeah. I've just been playing the campaign and verses on Gears 5 when I've got time. And then, like, I might write a bit on the side or something like that. And yeah. then I might do some other stuff. And, like, I try to catch up with a mate at least once a week or something like that. And... Yeah, I've I've been doing fairly well. I'm fairly happy with the way it's been going at the minute. Yeah, but um, yeah, that's kind of my day. day and I mean, like we're both we're both still very young. Like, there's not a whole lot to reveal about our. We're, well, <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm very young and very single, so therefore I don't really have much <laughs> personal life to reveal. <laughs> High five, bro! Same hey, here. Woo, let's yay. go. Loneliness. So yeah, I don't really have a whole Love lot of it. loneliness. Uh, mm. There's not really a whole lot to reveal about my personal life, so <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that's pretty Boop. much it. Uh, I also have um, I have one other project that I want to mention. I have an original EP that's in the works, very slowly, but also in the works. Uh, it's gonna like I had a surge of energy last month where I was like, all right, I'm gonna make some songs that really feel like pump up songs. So I wrote one. <laughs> and, <laughs> And but I I want to write a few more, um, and uh, so it'd probably be just three or four songs uh, of just some really fun badass rock stuff that will hopefully come out early next year, and that's nice. about it. Yeah. Now one quick thing I'd like to do before we cap it off because we have gone to about an hour twenty as far as I'm yeah. aware. Um, I'd like to just mention the uh, list that we were talking about earlier of ideas we have for future episodes. We've yes. literally got. Uh, a oh, document a that's the we got the, we got a document that says the Firestorm podcast. It's under the subsection of ideas and shit. Yes. So this so, is uh, uh, yeah. ideas. Yeah, I was gonna say. So um, we are not sure what the order will be yet, but we're going as of right now. We knew this was going to be the first episode, just so y'all could kind of get to know us a little bit more. What you're getting yourself into when you start listening, and. Uh, we don't. I, we're gonna record a few more in bulk, and then eventually we'll probably decide what order we want them to come out. Um, yes. So, but yeah, we have uh, all uh, kinds of ideas. Like we, I, I know I at least want to talk about Pokemon Sword and Shield before they come out. Uh, I want to. Um, one of my one of the ideas I also came up with that I think I might want to be the second episode. Spoiler is the. Um, the one where we talk about video games from our childhoods that we grew up with. <laughs> Yes, I'm very keen on that idea because that's one thing as well. I also do reminisce quite a bit about games of my childhood, yes. and so, I would very much be a fan yeah, of that. Yeah, so idea. that I think I want that one to be the second episode. Uh, we want to talk fair. about. Um, I know Trent loves Skillet. We are going to talk about them very yes! soon. Yes, Skillet. We're going to talk about uh, Skillet very soon because um, I'm not as big into skillet as trent is but i know that i have a history with them so and they will uh, there might be times in the future where we do this just kind of chat about other bands as well um yes i know we're going to talk about indie rock bands i'm excited about that one too that that idea i brought up that idea because i used to write a whole heap on steam it as well to try and keep my like this is mainly the start of this year i wrote a bunch on this uh beta program called steam it 
yeah. uh, it kind of went to shit because my login's all gone and blah blah blah. No <laughs> need to worry about that. But um, my, well, I had ideas to talk about. Like a few of the the, uh, the things I wrote about were like three cancelled bands which I would like to see make a return. Uh, mm-hmm. Artists I found because of video game soundtracks and stuff like that. And one of the yeah. things I was go- one of the things I was going to write about was about indie rock bands and some of my favorites. And it's amazing people see nowadays you look at some people and how no like not a lot of people collect cds anymore a lot of people like it's all digital now you yeah. look in my shelf and you will see a bunch of indie rock bands which how do you know that i ordered from their american websites and paid american yeah. dollars and all that for and people are going to look at those cds and think who the fuck are these people yeah like people look at my look at my shelf and they see amelie they see nate wants to battle they see Adam Kane, they see yeah. a bunch of this shit and they don't know who they are. Yeah, and, um, and I, I mean, and I don't really know if Nate Wants to Battle counts as an indie rock guy because no, he's kind of on YouTube. See, see, but yeah, no, that's, that's I have that's a fair, lot of my favorite I mean. artists now are like indie rock bands, like some that really aren't as well known as a lot of the others. Yeah, but that's what that's the general vibe I'm talking about. Like the more mm-hmm. unknown, like ignoring YouTube artists, like the bands that are pu- like are kind of been there but are kind of unknown. Like I think Downstate yes. is a very good example of that. They made a few really big songs for WWE, and they made a couple of solo albums which no one acknowledged, but I love. And now mm-hmm. they've kind of got a second win with all elite wrestling. They're kind of yep. back into the fold with that now, so that's awesome. But it's stuff like that. Bands which have been there for a while, but no one really pays much attention to. Yeah. Yeah. Other ideas was uh, about referencing wrestling. Uh, we want yes. to talk about wrestling. because we're both, we are both- very, we're both very into wrestling, so we're hoping to uh, kind of chat about like the state of wrestling uh, as it is right now, uh, how we got into it. Um, and then eventually, we, we 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 had the idea once of even recording SummerSlam and drinking like alcoholic. Yeah, that never that, ne- that never went through. But um, we could do something like that for a podcast, or mm-hmm. live reactions. Who knows? Yeah. Um, but yeah, wrestling definitely a, a big yeah, idea. Yeah, and then that maybe like come WrestleMania season, we'll do uh, fantasy booking, some stuff like that. Maybe um, we'll see. And also, I haven't got into it properly, but I have actually been to a few wrestling training events at the, uh, nice. every so often. The local There's a local company that I've been training... Well, not training through, but I have a mate there that's a professional... He's a, been a professional wrestler for 10 plus years. Been trying to get into it a little bit, just if I can. Like Now that I've got full-time work, I don't think I'll be able to, but that, right. that's kind of like a side passion of mine. If I was able to, I'd fucking do it, but I need to get into shape. I need to actually get the time dedicated to it. Yeah. But yeah. That's one of the other things I've done. Um, yeah. One of the ideas here as well on our list of future podcasts uh, you wrote down, one of us tries to explain the plot of a video game <laughs> or anime to the other has never seen hey. with no context. That's, see, I would like to see this fun. as like... I would like to see this as like a mini competition where we spend a few minutes explaining the plot of a game or anime and if we can correctly guess it, they get a point. Yeah, no, I, so my idea, like, that, well, that's, yeah, that's a, um, that would be, like, a more, I don't know if that would be suited for, like, a podcast, that'd be more like a little skit video that we do, but I think just, Maybe. like, I think we, the idea I, ha- I had in my mind for that originally was, like, let's take, let's pick out an anime or video game that one of us has never seen or played and doesn't mind having spoiled for us and you ba- and one of us basically tries to get the other to understand the plot and the characters without them playing the game without them seeing any gameplay without them seeing the anime whatever like just kind of make them understand without any of that and just explain it in like the the most like as much detail as you can and we just ha- and the other person who just has no fucking idea what's happening just because the only thing we have is the explaining the other person explaining I, what's going on i would be keen on that idea i would very much be keen on that yeah cuz i i mean like i like i said, i've never played any of the gears games so you could try See, to explain those to that, me <laughs> that was the thing in gears 5 that had like a really good 5 minute recap video of the series up until this point yeah. i was literally had the idea of just reading you that monologue yeah. <laughs> and see if you could guess that it was gears of war yeah. but now you know that's kind of spoiled so oh well never mind yeah. that like but um 
but like yeah, I think no, we could see, say, like we could say like here's the game that I'm explaining to you or here's the anime that I'm talking about you know like and like something that we wouldn't maybe otherwise watch um, or or play or whatever because I know that I'm not huge into well, like games like well, hold on, Gears of War. Hold on, just to say, so, have you watched High School? Have you watched High School of the Dead? No. You have not. Well then. <laughs> okay. Here we go. See, that, that's one of my favorite anime series that got cancelled because the creator died. Rest, rest in peace. So oof, rest in peace. Big, yes, big, big of. Anyway, yes, very fantastic. So idea. we, but so then, we have some, and there's some more on there. You'll see them eventually. Um, but yes. a lot of them are like continuous ideas like some of the like or some of them they're like things we could do multiple times whereas yes. some of them are one-offs like where we talk about indie rock bands the one where we talk about video games from our childhood the one where we talk about sword and shield those are mm. a, there's a, and there will be a lot more one-offs like that in the future but um i think we should have like something you know that we could do a f- like a couple times you know like uh, I yes. like the idea another one of the ideas I wrote down are live album reviews where we uh, listen where we both listen to an album that neither of us has heard before and we basically give commentary and then after each track we um, review it like not very yes. long but like kind of talk about what we thought about it and stuff like that I think that could be fun as long as we're not like totally silent during the tracks themselves so that means yes. like the podcast like the people who listen can listen along with us to the to the album and then you know kind of listen to what we think about it or like if they've never heard it or even if they have heard it whatever like i feel like that could yeah. be a fun thing to do that's in that's interesting in concept we just got to figure out how to make that work yes but I'm and sure we have to make sure that'll that actually work <laughs> yes all right i think i think that's about it that's I think that's all we got for time. So, thank you very much for listening to the first episode of the Firestorm podcast. Thank I think you we're very gonna much. do this. I think we're gonna do this thing where, like, we we take in turns opening and ending the podcast. Since you opened it, yeah, I'd be very happy to, to end it. Go for Although, it. I have uh, this has been an enjoyable experience, learning a bit more about each other, and also hope you guys have learnt a very much about yes, us. Yes, because now you know what you're getting yourself into when you listen to these podcasts. Yes. Indeed, because we, although this was a little bit more of a, just a simple topic about talking about ourselves, we will be delving into more of obviously of what we have just talked about, more topics yep. that everyone can get involved with yes. and have more discussion about and crack more fucking stupid <laughs> jokes about. Because <laughs> if you want to see, there weren't a lot of chance for jokes in this one because we're just like, oh, here's my here's my YouTube story. That's not any. Here's fun. my life. Here's <laughs> my life. <laughs> and that's that's no fucking. That's no fun. No, this isn't funny. No, but, <laughs> god damn yeah, it. Not, not but yet. again, but, um, it, like Trent mentioned uh, at the beginning, please do go uh, check out our Twitter account and our Facebook page. We will be posting there. Um, at least uh, probably every day you'll see I, something stupid plan- pop up on one of those accounts just to, yes, and, and we will be updating with like you know when new podcast episodes come out all that kind of stuff you will know you will just also be in for a lot of stupid jokes <laughs> Yes, I pl- <laughs> we, uh, we're posting on Facebook and Twitter, mainly Twitter because it's easily accessible, yes. but I will post on Facebook as well. Yeah, I don't and, really um, use Facebook, I, so f- just so you know, if you go on Facebook, you're probably seeing Trent. If you're on Twitter, likely. there's probably about a 50-50 chance. That w- oh, fit, like, I'd, say, <laughs> I'd, say, I'd say 60-40, you're definitely more oh, yeah, active I'm, on Twitter I'm more than act- I'm a lot more active on Twitter than, than Trent is, yes. but... But um, one thing I do plan on doing as well is I plan on taking like a few minute clips from each podcast, maybe, and making little highlights and posting yeah, them on social media as well. Because there was a few interesting topics we actually discussed in episode zero, which kind of just like it just happened out of nowhere. Yeah. But, so stuff like that. But um, if you haven't noticed it, by this episode, we we like kind of we don't really like stay on one thing for very long. A no. lot of times we just go on complete tangents that don't really have anything to do with anything. And then we just like, oh, shit, I I, I forgot we have to uh, (laughs) go back to talking about what we're actually supposed to be talking about. Yeah, that that sort of thing happens. Anyway, so, yes, please follow um, us. We will be on... Yes, we are on YouTube and SoundCloud as the Firestorm Podcast. As of right Um, now? As of right now, I have made both the SoundCloud and the YouTube account. Yep. Uh, 
And we're also on Twitter and Facebook as the Firestorm Podcast. To easily find us on SoundCloud, Twitter, and Facebook, we are Firestorm Pod. So yes. that will be the easy link for That's you. The and at. YouTube. And yes, at and whatever. And uh, the YouTube URL is whatever the fucking random code is decided <laughs> it's deemed us worthy of being. Whatever, whatever we've been given by the gods. Yeah, by the by internet the gods. gods. No, no. Yeah. So yes, please follow us there yeah. and let us know what you think of this podcast and let us know if you have any ideas yes. of what we can um, discuss. You can email us. We don't really check the email, but we do have a business email. It's um, Firestorm Productions Two at gmail dot com. You can email us with uh, suggestions or questions for us to answer. I'd love for us to do a Q and A podcast at some point. Um, like fan Q&A or whatever I think that'd be awesome so if you have something to suggest or something to ask us please do send us an email we may not respond because we don't really use the email but we will see I'll, it I'll check I will it tell us, I'll check we, it I'll tell you we will see it yes I have notifications on so I will I see it well. unless unless it starts getting spammed and then I will turn it off yes. but um yes anyway again thank you very much for listening to us we hope you enjoyed and yes. have a good one, guys. Bye.